Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q1 FY23 earnings conference call of Federal Mogul Goods India Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star and zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Mamta Samad from Perfect Relations. Thank you and over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Aman. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us on Federal Mughal Gutsi India Limited Q1 FY23 earnings conference call. Today, we have with us the senior management represented by Mr. Vinod Kumar Hans, Managing Director, Mr. Manish Chadda, CFO and Finance Director, and Dr. Khalid Khan, Director, Legal and Company Secretary. Before we begin, I would like to add that some of the statements to be made in today's discussion may be forward-looking in nature. We will begin the call with the opening remarks from the management, after which we will have the forum open for an interactive Q&A session. I would now request Mr. Vinod Kumar Hans for the opening remarks. Over to you, sir. Yeah, thank you very much, and uh, good afternoon, and uh, welcome uh, everyone for uh, on this uh, uh, earning call. Uh, I think this quarter, which has gone by, uh, uh, you know, the summit up was uh, very challenging, but also uh, very promising. Uh, you know, signals uh, you know uh, given during this quarter. Uh, on on the commodities uh, side uh, we saw some of the peaks uh, in in the commodity in april till mid of may uh, along with the peak of uh, commodity rates the availability became an issue but uh, towards the june uh, the commodity did come down and the availability was better so that was a good news and that's what i, I referred to being promising on the geopolitical side uh, uh, the ukraine crisis uh, which we were expecting to be a short lived phenomenon has uh, somehow you know converted into a larger complex problem uh, for mainland europe uh, and uh, you might have noticed a lot of uh, issues uh, uh, within mainland europe uh, you know with the gas prices and uh, several other inflation uh, you know factors coming up uh, which is impacting the European market uh, in a very, very different way, uh, uh, also the automotive market. Uh, on the other side, the China uh, remained uh, during this quarter uh, in lockdown and several uh, cities uh, and the ports in China particularly uh, were constrained. The travel, uh, I would say the travel as well as the, uh, the goods transportation restriction remained. Uh, which created, uh, uh, I would say, in terms of freight uh, rates, uh, one of the highest in the history. And also the lead time uh, for the transportation was also one of the highest. Uh, uh, nevertheless, uh, in, in July, we saw a softening trend into these uh, areas as well. Uh, on the on the semiconductor side, uh, I would say there was, there was uh, definitely... Uh, uh, ease uh, out of the problem, uh, but uh, not completely recovered. Uh, at least on the passenger vehicle, uh, our customers are claiming uh, they are still not able to produce uh, uh, to the uh, to the capacity uh, based on not only semiconductor, I would say, but also some of the other uh, supply chain bottlenecks, which has resulted uh, again on these uh, some of the geopolitical uh, constraints uh, which, uh, which were mentioned. In summary, the, the automotive market, uh, which is the prime interest to us in India, uh, if we talk about uh, light vehicle, which is combination of uh, passenger vehicle and uh, uh, pickup trucks, uh, uh, small pickup trucks, it was flat on a quarter to quarter basis. The heavy commercial vehicle were down by about 10% uh, from the previous quarter. The two-wheeler, uh, you know, had a steady growth uh, from a very low base, uh, and it grew by 6%. Tractor was a very, you know, shining star uh, segment in the whole, uh, uh, I would say, uh, the exposure we have into the segment 
and it really uh, grew by about 50%. So in summary, the way we are uh, segmented uh, uh, into, into these uh, uh, market segments, uh, uh, we should have grown by nearly 8 to 9%, but uh, I'm happy to report that our growth is uh, uh, much higher than the, the market growth. And uh, which is very in line with the, uh, you know, what we have been saying uh, in our earlier uh, calls that uh, uh, we should definitely improve our our market share uh, going forward as as uh, uh, the new generation uh, vehicles comes along. Uh, when I say promising, the uh, quarter was uh, uh, basically we have seen uh, on the on the light vehicle side. Uh, a, the market is maturing more towards the sports uh, utility vehicle side, uh, which is pretty good for us on the, uh, I would say, higher end of the you know, spectrum. And also a lot of uh, the launches uh, by several manufacturers were received well in the market. Uh, there's a claim that uh, close to 700,000 vehicles uh, are booked and are waiting for delivery. Uh, and... Uh, I'm happy to report that our our win rate in these uh, uh, new vehicles which are launched, uh, our participation is is uh, pretty pretty good, uh, and that's a that's a reason uh, that it has resulted into in terms of revenue, a highest ever quarter for us. Uh, we'll discuss these numbers uh, more in detail, and uh, Manish will run through these uh, figures. So, in my opening uh, comment, I will just again summarize. Uh, very challenging quarter, but uh, uh, we see a very clearly, uh, you know, a, a very, uh, I would say, promising uh, future in front of us. Uh, there may be still some headwinds uh, uh, which, uh, which remain uh, uh, related to the China and Ukraine issues, but I think overall, uh, in summary, uh, we, we are on a, on a, I would say, a growth path. Uh, uh, for sure, and uh, we are all already into six weeks into this quarter, and uh, I can tell you that uh, this quarter uh, is even better uh, than the previous quarter. Uh, with that, uh, I I hand it over to Dr. Khalid Khan, who will run through the company presentation initial part. Thank you so much. Thank you, Vinod Khan. Uh, so, first slide is. Uh, a safe harbor forward looking statement. And second slide is about the company overview. So this company, as you know, was established in 1954 as a JV with uh, Goethe's work of Germany, which was owned by Fred Mughal LLC. Globally, Tenico has four business groups, uh, namely performance solutions, motor parts, clean air and powertrain. Company's products substantially fall under powertrain business group. So this company is based out of Gurugram, uh, and it is engaged in the manufacture, supply, and distribution of automotive components in India as well as internationally. So mainly we cater to uh, we, we we offer pistons, piston rings, piston pins, wall seats, and wall guides, and cater to automotive, heavy duty, motorcycles, energy, industrial, power generation, railway, and defense industries. So the company manufactures world-class products at its art of the state-of-the-art manufacturing facilities, which are located at Patiala, Bengaluru, and Bhivari. Uh, now this company operates as a subsidiary of Tenneco INC, post Tenneco's acquisition of Federal Mughal LLC. The company uh, employs more than 5,000 employees uh, as on 30th June, and it has three manufacturing sites, two sales offices, 13 warehouses, and the company has 30 plus OE manufacturers, component, uh, customers. Coming to the next slide, which talks about manufacturing facilities. So uh, one of our plants is located in Patiala, Punjab, and it, it has an area of approximately 60 acres. Then we have, uh, this plant was established in 1954, Another plant is located in Bengaluru, Karnataka, which has an area of approximately 50 acres. And both these plants 
uh, manufacture pistons, pist uh, piston pins and rings. Uh, Bangalore plant was established in 1977. We have a third plant which is located at Bhivari, Rajasthan, and it has an area of about 5.5 acres. And the product here uh, are valve seats and valve guides. This plant was established in 1994. All the three plants are certified IATF 16949, ISO 14001, ISO 45001. Coming to the next slide, which depicts the shareholding pattern as on 30th June 2022. So there has not been any change since the last quarter. So our shareholding remains uh, the same, like 60.05% with Sagamadal Holdings, which is our holding company. And 14.93% and, uh, is with uh, Sagamadal uh, Germany. And 25.02% is with other, which comprises uh, public shareholders. Coming to the next slide, which talks about the board of directors. So there has not been any change in the last quarter. So we have three independent directors and board is uh, headed by a chairman, which is, uh, who, who, is, who is an independent director. And we have uh, one women independent director also in line with the requirements of uh, law. Then we have two non-executive, non-independent directors and four full-time directors. Uh, for the next slide, I would request Mr. Vinod Hans to take you through uh, the competitive strength and other slides. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Khalid. The, I think next uh, six or seven slides are very, very similar to what we presented uh, um, in the last call. Uh, so. I would run it through quickly so that we have uh, more time for the Q&A. So again, on the credit rating, uh, uh, we are long-term A+, plus and uh, short-term A1+. Plus. Uh, on the R&D center, we have a, a, a R&D center in Bangalore and Jivari. And of course, these R&D centers are mainly uh, uh, you know, oriented towards uh, the application engineering and testing our uh, I would say base uh, uh, R&D, we are taking support from our global lo uh, location. Uh, you mentioned that uh, we have a seamless technology transfer uh, 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 on, on our product, and uh, this makes us, uh, uh, you know, a little bit different from the other players uh, where uh, they have either a joint venture or they have a technical arrangement, uh, which has its own... Uh, firewalls, but in our case, uh, the technology uh, support is uh, absolutely seamless. Uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, our segmentation, we are well diversified uh, between the two-wheeler, three-wheeler, uh, uh, passenger vehicle, commercial trucks, uh, tractors, uh, industrial, even railway defense. Uh, we supply to more than close to 35 plus uh, OEMs, uh, so so the the business is naturally hedged. Uh, we we have strong, uh, uh, I would say, financial liquidity, which has improved uh, even during this quarter. Uh, and of course, we have uh, a very stable and uh, experienced, uh, talented uh, team, uh, uh, which is uh, driving this business. Uh, some of the key customers uh, you can uh, see uh, on on this slide, uh, they are almost. Uh, Oh, I would say whoever fires this engine in India and also globally, uh, we, we are we are supplying them. Uh, in terms of uh, revenue mix, uh, uh, I mentioned in my opening uh, remarks. Although for the overall, uh, you know, split of uh, our business uh, on a yearly basis, uh, we are kind of 86% uh, uh, you know directed toward the domestic and 14% export. However, for the quarter under you know uh, uh, discussion, uh, because of the situation in Europe, and of course we stopped supplying to Russia uh, because we are part of uh, U.S. Uh, subsidiaries and uh, we are mandated by these uh, sanctions. So our supplies to Russia stopped, and uh, the European market, which is impacted uh, by this crisis, also softened down 
and then there was also a slow down in the us after market mainly resulting out of uh, the inflationary pressure and credit uh, situation over there uh, so the share of export uh, reduced from 40 to 9% however uh, the domestic uh, you know market uh, more than compensated uh, this uh, growth turn so even with the reduction in 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 this export uh, we were able to uh, make a record quarter also i think we we saw a shift because of this subject of uh, uh, you know constraint in some of the export market what some of our customers were uh, have done that they have produced more in india uh, uh, so that the india was was a sweet spot in the whole whole uh, quarter so i'm happy to report that some of the global customer they produce more in india so we have more i would say deemed the export uh, 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 you know happening during this quarter uh, by the way so which is not that part of 9% so we see a clearly a shift of uh, this uh, this uh, uh, market happening uh, uh, and uh, the customers are also uh, shifting the you know locational priorities and overall it's a good news for india that uh, the global customers are relying more on india production base uh, uh within this uh, global uh, uh, i would say geopolitical situation uh, uncertainties uh in terms of uh, our split uh, virtually remains uh, almost the same uh, 28% for passenger vehicles uh, 12% for two wheeler uh, which comprises uh, about 40% uh, which is uh, you know impacted by um, I, i can say the cloud of electrification in front of us uh, but then we have about uh, 27% business in aftermarket and the oe sales uh, and 33% business in commercial truck uh, uh, light commercial off highway industrial uh, tractors uh, uh, so in summary we have i would say nearly uh, 60% of our business uh, which is uh, agnostic of the electrification um, factor uh, on the market position uh, no changes uh, i would say the uh, we are number two uh, overall in piston number one in diesel piston uh, diesel by the way uh, in this quarter uh, moved the needle although there was a declining trend in diesel uh, for so many years but uh, uh, surprisingly because the way the market is shifting you, you might have seen a lot of issues uh, uh getting you know preferred uh, source of uh, mobility and um, most of these suvs uh, diesel is being preferred by the way so that is you know shifting the middle a uh, little bit in favor of diesel again uh, uh, what we saw uh, then to something we are uh, you know number one and cc and guide again uh, number one position so the power train uh, overall uh, the key driver and tech uh, on the on the you know market and the technology remains the same uh, i would say uh, the better fuel economy is is uh, is uh, i would say call of the day with the, the prices of the fuel uh, you know hitting the top uh, within that uh, we see a very clearly a shift towards uh, alternate fuels uh, uh, the cng uh, i would say portion of uh, the light vehicle is now roughly about 11% uh, so in summary you know the 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 diesel you know has improved by 1% from 18 to 19% cng significantly improved to 11% but the gasoline uh, reduced to 67% actually so the the cng is uh, kind of uh, um, you know uh, overlapping into the the uh, the gasoline um, uh so with the cng you know there is a more shift towards uh, uh, the ethanol and uh, other uh, uh, flex fuels what we call uh, so we are working very closely on that uh, so so that's on the fuel side uh, which is uh, uh, you know driving the market and uh, uh, this uh, trend is uh, you know uh, is uh, you know on a on an increasing trend uh, which is uh, again a welcome uh you know or you know component supplier like us because we have a chance uh to increase our values uh, with the with the these uh, changes uh, uh 
and overall uh, the low emissions uh, remain um, you, you know that uh, uh, the the co2 and other other uh, emission restrictions uh, coming up uh, very strongly uh, from the government and uh, from uh, uh, from the media and uh, the durability uh, i would say requirements uh, are again uh, increasing uh, so the band users are looking uh, more and more uh, non serviceable intervals and uh, the extension of warranty which oems are extended which is again a good news for us uh, they are looking for a very reliable uh, solutions uh, during this time uh, i'm happy to report that uh, we had uh, several awards uh, uh, we had the awards from fiat india mahindra uh general motor uh uh then daimler uh john deere uh, we also got an award from ktm austria and uh, also we got an award from uh, toyota i with that i hand it over to to manish uh, to run through uh some of the financial uh, slides uh including uh, uh the focus we have on the margin expansion and cash generation over to you manish So thank you, Vinod, uh, and good afternoon to everyone. Uh, this slide 13 talks about uh, the performance focus and margin extension. So actually, these are uh, so we we know that run through the competitive strength we have and technology which we are uh, um, the strength we have. So so we are uh, in this technical uh, highly technical environment. We are focusing more on the growth opportunities uh, on the higher technology, and uh, we are also focusing primarily. on on fixed cost reduction operation efficiency and also sorry to interrupt you mr chadda may i request you to please come closer to the mic your voice is breaking yeah. can you can you hear me now yes sir so uh, sorry i will uh, go again so uh, as i mentioned uh, we know did uh, explain earlier the competitive strength uh, strength of of the company we are now focusing more on this growth opportunity with high technical in marvel uh, the business is consolidating and we, uh, we are trying to take advantage of uh, this consolidation and also parallelly working on the cost reduction and low capital uh, intensity in balance between the uh, capex and the revenue ratio and at the same time uh, i think uh, this uh, a major focus was also on the commodity inflation recovery which is all creating value uh, for the shareholders uh maybe if you go to the next slide on the financial uh, we know did touch about uh, this is a uh highest uh, sale for this company for the quarter uh, so, so as i mentioned we we are focusing to capture the market and we are growing uh, uh, more than the market despite uh, we were having impact of the export uh, getting soft enough in uh, north america and europe So we grew almost uh, 26% from the previous year and almost 13% from the previous quarter. Overall, EBITDA uh, 11.3 as compared to uh, 11% less in the previous year and 12% in the previous quarter. Uh, as you know, it also suggests that this quarter uh, was very challenging with global supply chain disruptions and uh, issues in China, uh, COVID situation. So we have to have this expedited trade. uh in uh, sector and also uh, we have this uh, peak of the raw material in the current quarter which get uh, softening in june and now uh, i think it is uh, i think we are talking and we are seeing the recovery also coming in so overall i think we have a best quarter on the top line and uh, we have a reasonable ebit of 11.3% for the current quarter next slide you can see the revenue trend uh, it is going from uh, uh, increasing uh ebitda uh, uh in the actual number it is uh, increasing in the uh, previous year but at the same time in the previous quarter it is almost uh, flat as i mentioned uh, these are some of the reason of uh, uh, this global uh, environment of supply chain disruption as resulted uh, in this uh, real time impact in the current quarter so eps has also the same uh, same uh, results uh, Uh, in the next slide, uh, uh, you can see PVT and CAD is also moving uh, in the same direction. 
So in the previous year, 4.3, uh, current year it is 6.3, and that 3.3% to 5%. So I think we are moving into the right direction. Uh, from the high highlights, uh, financial uh, uh, overview, we have revenue of 400 uh, 4,000 million, 500 million, uh, which has major increase. We grew almost 48% uh, in the domestic market, but the uh, impact of the slowdown in the US and European markets, uh, uh, where our export content has grown down to 9% as compared to the year last year, 13%. Uh, EBITDA, uh, we have 454 million, that is the 352 million of the previous uh, year corresponding quarter. So, uh, as I mentioned, uh, it is impacted by steep rise in commodity and global supply chain discussions and increase the premium rate. Uh, but we see recovery is coming in the, current, in the second quarter, which is July to September, and we are also seeing the, the sales uh, should be better. Uh, uh, from the from the from the uh, previous quarter, first quarter, and the company has net profit after sales of 187 million and cash. Uh, uh, even in the supply chain uh, disruption, we did increase. Uh, uh, there are increase in inventory because of the transit, but at the same time, uh, we have generated cash of 293 million. So, so we have uh, we have generated cash. Uh, and uh, we are investing in the growth opportunities to have a big success in the technology. So that's all from uh, my side. Uh, I will hand it over to Dr. Khalistan. Uh, thank you, Manish. So uh, I would uh, update you regarding our CSR efforts. So we, uh, there is a Priyas Juvenile Aid Center. So we sponsor the education of 100 girl children. Uh, out of 100 uh, girl children, 50 are from the remand home itself and 50 are from the local community. Approximate budget for 2022 and 23 is 16.50 lakhs. Additionally, we also 100% sponsor a school, which is Dharangana. And this, this school has approximately 85 ch children, and all of them are from the local community. Approximate bu budget for 2022 and 23 is around 10.225 uh, lakh. Uh, with this, I would like to hand it over to Mamta. Thank you very much. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking the question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may please press star and 1 at this time. Our first question is from the line of Saket Kapoor from Kapoor and Company. Please go ahead. Yeah, Namaskar, sir. Uh, and uh, thank you for the uh, opportunity and a detailed presentation. So sir, just to sum up in one line, uh, although we had uh, a, a very good quarter in terms of top line, the first quarter, uh, go, uh, going forward as the uh, our, our current outlook is, that we will be uh, getting the benefit of the uh, lower commodity prices and also uh, the uh, uh, the uh, l lower freight cost that that these two factors which have affected our uh, EBITDA margin for the first quarter will get evened out and the demand outlook uh, remains firm uh, as has been the case for quarter one so my understanding is correct mr Hans. yes i will add only one factor that uh, our prices uh, say from a first of july uh, with the uh, Say one third of our customer will also pick in with the backdated, I mean, based on the previous uh, high uh, commodity prices. So on on the revenue side, uh, our net prices uh, are still on a you know increasing mode with the with customers. Uh, so that's another factor which uh, will help. Right. Yeah. But uh, so that these are all positive uh, incremental EBITDA margin factors that that will play out uh, over the period of time now. 
that's right i mean we we have to see you know uh, overall uh, as i said that this quarter so far if you talk about the six weeks is in uh, you know sweet spot where mm. uh, we are experiencing uh, uh, better commodity prices and uh, you know reduced rates uh, they are still high but at least lower than the uh, earlier quarter on the other side uh, based on uh, remember we used to say that our our prices with customer are so you know you know uh, contracted that we get a price increase after on an average 6 months so our prices in uh, say july are getting kicked in 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 sorry in january is getting kicked in july so we are still you know having a some advantage from that cycle actually so so now the the prices which you know we have seen a reduction in the commodities so the price give back will be only due in the next year next year means uh, uh in the last quarter uh, uh, generally to march I, i hope i'm able to explain that yeah. yes sir. so the lag effect will now play in a positive way as has been the one where, where there was a compression with the rising tide and now Correct. there will be a, 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 a the expansion with the falling tide you are absolutely right this quarter and uh, i think some portion of our next even next quarter will be on a you know better lag and then uh, uh, this reduction from uh, the customers uh, based on if these commodity prices remain where they are then uh, there will be a reduction due due to contract which will happen maybe from january onwards uh, then we next year onwards and and about the and uh, the utilization levels are going to be firm uh, uh, for this quarter itself uh, as per the visibility from the order uh, order program from your oem Manish has a better number on the the, the uh, you know utilization. Uh, Manish, can you take it? Yeah, so again, so thanks, uh, thanks, you know. So, so our utilization uh, package is, I would say, average 95, 96 percent in the current quarter. Even some of the value seen here is 100 percent. Uh, I'm talking about April to June. Uh, uh, but at the same time, I would say it is somewhere around 94, 95 percent of average uh, utilization. in april to june and we would see that uh, uh, july uh, july to uh, in september uh, i think we would be doing better than uh, the april to june so right if i have to sum up like that okay and there so is one more we... factor on pro- uh, sorry sorry sir please nahi aap boliye sir so there is one more factor uh, the, if you see over the uh, shift uh, or or the the impact of the softening of europe and north america has impacted our profitability in the mix actually we have slight better margin in the export market also so that is also impacting for us sir i didn't get you so come again sir so the margin in the export sales are better than the domestic uh, customer mm-hmm. so what i am saying with the decline in the export sale in the current quarter because of the geographical situation in europe and uh, and north america has also impacted the profitability of the current quarter but since that you have mentioned that many of it is in the deemed export category so uh, that get negated the, uh, in that sense yeah i mean no, on, no, a, on a sequential basis it may not apply what what manish was probably trying to clarify is that in the previous i mean in the quarter which is under discussion which is april to june uh your question was that uh, in spite of the highest uh, revenue our profitability is still not moved in that so manish was answering to your question that uh, because of the export uh, i would say pie getting the uh, shrunk where we were sitting on a good margin so that is that is impacted along with these uh, headings uh, uh, what we mentioned about commodities and freight uh, right so when we look at your consolidated number they uh, they are also looking better but uh, 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 the bottom line is, is remaining the same so uh, uh, how to have the consolidated set of numbers uh, behave and also sir on the employee cost rationalization uh, from the very beginning of posting concourse sir you you have been articulating the fact that uh, cost of employee needs to be rationalized but uh, where are we in that journey sir uh, if if we take that into account there is a quarter on quarter improvement uh, increase in employee cost by 5 crore and also year on year is not comparable uh, correctly so if these two aspects so maybe, are to be clear yeah maybe i will take that uh, so if, if you see our uh, labor cost uh, as a percentage to revenue 
it is lower by 1.2 percent uh, from the previous quarter and almost 4.5 percent from the previous year. Right. So uh, over over labor, we, uh, we were keep touching that we have a clear focus on uh, labor costs and we are addressing uh, our our labor costs very aggressively. And uh, from the previous quarter, previous year, if you can see, it's a slight increase of two percent cost, whereas uh, the revenue has grown up by twenty six percent. So we have the labor maybe sixty percent patient or forty percent, uh, you know, the camps and training, which we are uh, the, you know the addressing based on the volume. And at the same time, in the last quarter, we were having a, a few up on the lead actuarial, right? Which has also, you can see the gap on the uh, on the value wise from the March quarter. But overall, if you see as a percentage of revenue, I think you will see the improvement. We are now at 20 percent, whereas if you see in the previous uh, years when we uh, we started, it was somewhere around 20, 20, 24 percent. To so we have bringing it down uh, uh, to somewhere around 20, 21 percent. Oh, so this will this will be the new normal. Uh, since the utilization levels are also uh, at at the peak, at peak optimization levels, twenty percent uh, uh, should be the uh, normalized so, so, uh, No, I won't say like that. It is uh, so. It has so we are we our focus is towards that. And uh, as I mentioned, sixty percent is the fixed labor, right? And uh, forty percent is variable. So you have that window to to address. And at the same time. This percentage uh, uh, also uh, because it is semi variable, I would say, is linked to the volume. So in a in a volume like this, yes, 20% is is the fair, uh, and uh, we are also further addressing on those aspects. Right. If you could throw some light on the page number 13 of your investor presentation, sir, wherein very categorically you have mentioned about your top uh, priority. And the uh, uh, way forward, uh, I'm just referring to building a stronger FMGIS, wherein you have mentioned about optimizing shareholder value creation through cash generation and targeted growth opportunities. So, if you could throw some more light on these two aspects of value creation through cash generation and targeted opportunity, and again, sir, coming to the point about the the uh, coming up with different uh, distribution from your investors since I think so now the new management in place uh, Apollo uh, your thought process uh, on the way ahead and also Khalid sir on the buyback part uh, once uh, these are answered. So thanks okay so maybe I will try to answer the first two uh, questions uh, on the slide 13 uh, and then maybe on the uh, uh, from the new management and uh, where we are, maybe call it. Uh, I would request you to take that. So, so if you see, uh, if you see our presentation, I think we are uh, we are mentioning that uh, uh, the the current environment is highly highly technical, and uh, there is a lot of technology uh, driven products. So, uh, there is consolidation happening in the uh, consolidation is happening in the market, and uh, we are uh, looking into all those growth opportunities. Which which will uh, which will help us taking the uh, market share uh, and uh, which you see in our financial number uh, by the way and now uh, with this technical uh, advantage there is a code uh, the part are co designed so we are working with the with the customers uh, on designing those parts with this highly technical uh, you know the, or uh, technical market. So I think so. These are the growth opportunities with this technology as we have, and uh, we are uh, focusing on uh, capex, family capex. We are seeing that in Euro six, which has given clearly advantage to us. So so, and also we are focusing uh, along with this growth opportunity uh, on the business. We are also focusing on cost reduction. We have uh, we have talked about uh, this labor cost, etc. And uh, so, so, which will drive the values to the business. So, the, the end result, what we are trying to bring with this, uh, with this uh, action or focus, to, to to take share in the market and do better than the market, which will ultimately uh, create values for the for the shareholder. And why it's so large? I think you can see the results. Uh, we are uh, uh, meeting those expectations. 
but sir how is this this will get translated uh, money and uh, top down so, to your investors uh, that so let me there. let me you know give you a very simple example uh, saket and allow me to make it a uh, little bit simple although i'm giving an example uh, say if you see typically during last uh, one year even off late uh, during last quarter you would have noticed uh, you know if i have to take example of toyota getting uh in announcing a new hybrid vehicle okay and which is in collaboration with suzuki and uh, it is manufactured uh, at toyota uh, plant so it has a hybrid as well as uh, the convention engine okay and then you had uh, this scorpio uh, uh, new scorpio launch which is uh, you know claimed uh, to be 100000 booking done in 30 uh, minutes and a similar number also claimed by uh, so it and suzuki for grand vitara and their hybrid vehicle now if you think uh, uh, you know their typical uh, the architecture uh, you know uh, we are present for example with with the toyota powertrain uh, with hybrid and uh, you know these have a high content per vehicle than a, a entry level vehicle uh and here we participate uh, with customer uh, you know uh, as a as a kind of a solution provider uh, to them so in a typical i would say low end vehicle uh, it will be more uh, you know there is somebody you know giving you the drawing and you are making as per that and where the value content uh, uh, on the table is less for for a supplier so what i'm trying to say is as the as the needle is moving and these kind of vehicles the customer are keen to to really put their focus on the vehicle design and the engine and combustion chamber they have to le- they, they have you know given a chance uh, to supplier like us to to uh, contribute uh, because they think that uh, probably we can give the best solution so that's where the value addition is coming uh, i don't know uh, i'm i'm able to explain this now yeah yes sir okay i i can take offline yeah. also but at value addition okay for your customer is then that definitely that will translate into better margins but your cash generation sharing with your investor uh, uh when will that start uh, happening sir and for the consolidated account sir if you could make throw some more lights sir we have seen uh, the consolidated results uh, also better thing starts kicking in so you will see that our revenue uh content the per component uh, we also see a very uh, you know significant shift in the needle and uh, you know this this thing has to hit on the ground and uh, uh, this whole uh, i would say uh, parabola shift uh, uh, and uh, which which happens in the market you will also shift uh, you will see this parabola shift into our numbers uh, with some lag right okay sir may khali sir uh, about the the new management uh, thought process currently and uh, 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 dividend and all things so uh, their option for this uh, uh, buying back the minority shareholders uh, uh, any update on the same okay so uh, on the buyback there is no plan right with regard to the tender offer uh, whereby an exit opportunity will be given to minority shareholders so they are still working on it and uh, they have publicly announced that it will happen sometime in the second uh, half of the year so we don't have any specific you know timeline from them but they are working on on the documentation part and uh, wherever required we we have been providing the information to them for finalizing the documents okay yeah. correct correct sir so i i'll come in the queue sir i have a couple yeah. of points if i tell i i'll sort of let's let's give chance to let's yes, yes, sir yes sir i will come in the queue we'll yeah. yeah yeah please thank you sir for the elaborate answer sir yeah. thank you and we'll wait for my turn again thank you anyone who wish to ask a question at this time they may please press star and one we have the next question from the line of ashwini chenapur from lime water please go ahead Hi, good afternoon. Uh, my compliment to the management for uh, a good quarter, despite a lot of uh, uh, market challenges. My question to you is: uh, Looking at the global uh, inflation numbers, uh, what are your plans of rebalancing your export to domestic uh, uh, 
market and you know are there any new markets internationally that you would be looking after uh, and how would your product mix be uh, matched to the export market please so if i have to take that question uh, i mean what's happening and you will see more and more uh, you know i can now uh, mention because uh, citro has announced its vehicle uh, and uh, this platform uh, uh, when i said platform the engine powertrain platform uh, will be globally i would say manufactured here and supplied uh, in other uh, countries so so this is one way to look at uh, 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 you know answering your question on the inflation and other sides so obviously uh, as i mentioned that india is still a sweet spot uh, uh within the global uh, you know scenarios even if the market uh, are difficult in some of the geography that is making a clear shift in uh, some of the oems to produce more from india okay and that that's what we see uh, here uh and we also see uh, i would say better allocation of semiconductors uh you know to indian companies uh so that uh, uh, they can produce uh, competitively here so this is one of the reason if you see globally india is uh, performing uh, much better uh, than i would say uh, any other uh, region so that's a very clear shift uh, which is happening uh so for us what it means is uh, uh there will be uh, i would say not a real export but increase in the deemed export which we have been uh communicating in our uh, several previous call so i think now it is started you will start to see this happening okay and then uh, you see the the latest uh, product uh, which are launched by almost all the oems uh they are the global uh, you know product in fact some of these were the global launches uh, from india so that is again a good news uh, uh, for uh, uh, component suppliers like us okay having said that uh we are also discussing with our global uh, you know team uh with the same uh, you know uh, drive uh, where our oems are uh, experiencing uh, obviously they we are working on several uh, you know possibilities there uh, we can supply uh, to our global locations from here so but uh, i have to also uh, mention with the caution that uh, our kind of product it takes about uh, you know uh, anywhere between 12 months uh, to 18 months uh, for testing and homologation to be completed uh, so but uh, i can i can say with confidence uh, that uh, uh, there are projects uh, uh, which are under final stage uh, where uh, you know we will we'll, we are just kicking in uh, uh, those investments uh, and uh, maybe the manish can share better uh, that our investment uh, in this year would be definitely better than the previous year although uh, if you see overall uh, uh, there is so much of uh, uncertainty on uh, you know i would say uh, volatility in the environment but but we 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 are very clear and we should be investing more than uh, what we have done in the previous year what are the top line expectations then uh, can give you give us a prediction for the uh, you know rest of the three quarters i'm not sure we should give you a, a hard line uh, you know projection but manish could you answer uh, uh, this question uh, in the capacity utilization way you know so i think you know the i, I don't i'm not sure whether we can comment on the future uh, uh, projection but as we mentioned uh, the current quarter uh, july to september we see better uh, from the previous quarter and the capacity utilization for the april to june was somewhere around 95% so, uh, so that is one way of looking into this for the full year and at the same time we know did mention that we are uh, uh, we are investing more than the, the previous year and now even within the year with this capacity utilization we are we are thinking to peak on those capex within the year so that uh, uh, we can start delivering uh, 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 we can peak on those uh, deliveries so so we see good growth in this year as compared to the previous year 
Okay, and uh, give us some, uh, you know, flavor of, of what what would be the spends on R and D? Uh, any new product lines coming in? So uh, maybe again I will take this uh, question. Thanks for that. So uh, our main R and D is happening globally. We are relying there, but at the same time uh, we have an application center, application engineering and analysis uh, done in India. So overall, if you tell, ask me, the total cost for SMG is somewhere around the 1.5 to 2 percent uh, per year. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that update. Uh, any and my final question is, uh, what is the update on the status of buyback? If I may ask. Alice, can you take this? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Can, can you just repeat it? Uh, after, uh, you know, the whole uh, Teneco growth, uh, sorry, the acquisition, uh, any update on the, uh, any any status update for buyback and price revision on interest account? Okay, so uh, as I answered to Mr. Saket Kapoor, uh, we, we are, uh, the, uh, Apollo is working on the detailed public statement and letter of offer, right? There were certain okay. uh, approvals pending. So hopefully this should happen. They have announced that this will happen in the second half of the year. Okay. So sure. we don't have visibility on the exit timeline, but we, we, we hope that it will happen in the second half. Okay. 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 Thank, thank you. Thank you for the uh, update. Uh, all the best to the management. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Priyanka Singh as an interested investor. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, good evening, sir. I have two questions. One, uh, could you share some insights on your EBITDA in terms of lower commodity prices? Uh, and the second question is, how are you planning your dividend distribution among investors for the rest of the fiscal year? Thank you. So uh, we we discussed in our uh, presentation that commodity prices were on the peak uh, in uh, April and May, and then start softening in in June. But at the same time, uh, we know did mention that uh, we have a contract with the customer where we see uh, the lag recovery is coming in. So for the current quarter, I would say uh, the lag is somewhere around the uh, almost uh, point, uh, point 0.5 percent uh, of the revenue uh, we are up, up pretty much uh, uh, recovering say from the current quarter the current quarter exposure we are almost recovered 90 percent of, uh, of of the recovery so so that is that is one on uh, on uh, raw material exposure also i would add that uh, we also were uh, you know, forced to increase our prices in the aftermarket from such of July. So that is another action. Uh, uh, we have to, uh, you know, push it on to the market because uh, these uh, cost was, uh, you know, uh, simply unbearable. So you will see some some advantage from there. Uh, although, you know, the we have to see whether the market is able to absorb this price increase, uh, what we have uh, put into our independent aftermarket. Um, thank you, sir, uh, and I wish you uh, well for your next quarter as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. A reminder to our participants, please press star and one if you wish to ask a question. See the follow-up question from the line of Sakit Kapoor from Kapoor & Company. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Sir, as we discussed earlier also and requested from investors and analyst community about the capital allocation policy. If, if we take into account the cash generation uh, that happens on a quarterly basis and uh, how is this cash going to be deployed? Uh, you, you mentioned about 1 to 1.5% uh, of the revenue on R&D. And uh, other aspect, if you could give some clarity, how, uh, how are you going to share this cash with your investors? And that will suffice. Uh, no, thanks, uh, uh, Saket, uh, Saket, for your question. So I think we did discuss earlier also that uh, we are discussing on this uh, 
डिविडेंड डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन भी है टेकिंग ऑफ कॉस्ट विद मैनेजमेंट but at the same time i think we were also discussing that uh, we have we are seeing the growth opportunity with the business increasing there is a increase in the working capital uh, we are spending more than uh, more than more in capex more than uh, uh, more than the last year and also we owning all the stock uh, so i think we are uh, we are addressing those with this cash and customer uh, Uh, investing in India or looking India as a hub, sweet spot, sweet spot for this automobile one. So I think this cash liquidity is helping us, but at the same time we are committed to, to consider this dividend uh, distribution uh, uh, this year. So we, we are we are working on that. Okay, sir. So uh, maybe sir, uh, when when can we hear something about this? I think so. We close the year la- in, in the month of uh, March March quarter. And now the AGM is due, and we know that no, uh, there was no resolution for any dividend distribution last year. So for this year, uh, should we wait for the Mar- March result, then uh, then to it, or uh, what's the thought process? And what is the cash on books, sir, uh, as on 30th June? It is 152 crore cash available. Uh, so as I mentioned, there is a lot happening in business. Uh, With this um, global uh, disturbance and I think market picking up, investment capex, you know, working capital, and then uh, we have a change in management also uh, in 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 the in in our uh, you know, company. So we are trying to coordinate, address all those stuff. Business should not suffer, and uh, as we mentioned that we are working towards that, and uh, we will try to get it uh, resolved at the. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That would be our last question for today. On behalf of Federal Mogul Goods in Delhi Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you all for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you everyone.